Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, ARM's current leading processor design is the Cortex A72, and we find it in system on chips like the Kirin 950, the Kirin 95, which we find in phones like the Huawei Mate 8 and the Huawei P9. Also, Qualcomm are using it in some of their mid range chips. Now, today, ARM have announced the Cortex A73. So what does the A73 bring to the table? How is it different to the Cortex A72? Well, let me explain. Now when you use your smartphone, the CPU is running and it produces heat. And the amount of heat it produces is a function of the voltage and of the frequency and of the chip design. And basically that heat is dissipated through the phone itself. Now when you do something like open an app or read a web page, the CPU usage will peak momentarily just for a few seconds and then it will drop down again as the app opens or as the web page is rendered and then while you're reading the web page the CPU can be running at a very low level and that's absolutely normal and that's absolutely fine and the amount of heat it produces during that peak uh, can, doesn't really matter because it's only doing it for a few seconds and the phone very easily dissipates that heat through its chassis and through the body of the phone. Now, when you start doing something complicated with your phone, that heat starts to build up. And the more it builds up, the more heat has to be dissipated through the body of the phone. And you've sensed it yourself. You might be holding your phone and it might feel warm to the touch at the back. And that's the heat being dissipated because unlike desktops, a mobile phone, a smartphone doesn't have a heat sink and a cooler and a big fan that's running on the back of it. It's all just passive heat dissipation. Now, basically, what happens is when you start running your phone at a high workload for a long period of time, the heat that's going out through the phone gets to a saturation point and it can't dissipate any more heat. So therefore, if you keep adding heat, the phone will just get hotter and hotter and hotter. And in fact, it will become uncomfortable in the hand. Now, when it gets to that point, the Linux kernel knows what's going on and it will actually bring down the amount of heat being produced by your CPU. And it does that using a thing called throttling. It will bring down the frequency it may even bring down some things like the voltages so that the heat being produced by the CPU is less and gives the chassis, the body of the phone, a chance to get rid of all the heat that it already has. And then if later on it finds that it actually has a spare capacity, more heat can be produced, it will ramp up the CPU usage again. Now this is really interesting because what happens is when it throttles, when it brings down the heat, it actually brings down the performance. So when we run a benchmark, and we all run benchmarks, or I run them to test phones as well, but when we run a benchmark, we often do it when the phone is cold and it runs and it can produce a peak level of performance for a short amount of time. I mean, how long do these benchmarks take to run? A few seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, and then that's it, they're over. Now, of course, what happens if you're doing that benchmark time and time and time again, or you're playing a game for a long period of time, or you're doing lots of calculations for a long period of time, the performance will actually drop. Now here's the thing about the Cortex A73. The amount of heat it produces during its peak performance level, just those few seconds that you're using it, and the amount of heat it produces with a sustained level of uh, workload is almost exactly the same. And we've never seen anything like this in a smartphone chip before. Always there's been an overhead where the CPU can hit a peak and produce more heat just for a short amount of time, but when it comes to its sustained level, it has to be uh, much lower. But with the Cortex A73, they are the same thing. And that is really an amazing thing for designers. Because first of all, it means that the amount of heat that's going to be produced by the CPU is constant. Now that may give way to new designs, the new ways to make mobile phones, make smartphones, the materials that are used, where the, the CPU is placed on the circuit board and so on. Because now the CPU designer knows that this level is always going to be constant. And it also means that when we're playing games, when we're using the app, the apps that are CPU intensive, actually the performance won't drop. It will actually stay the same after the first minute and after 30 minutes, we should be getting the same level of performance. And again, that's something we haven't seen before in a mobile system on a chip. Now, before I go any further, there are a few caveats. The CPU, and we're talking about the CPU here, is only one part on a system on a chip. The GPU is another important part and it produces a significant amount of heat as well. And there are other components as well, like the modems and the, the ISPs and the DSPs and the memory controllers, and they all produce an amount of heat as well. Now, if you've got a very efficient CPU, but the GPU is producing lots of heat, the CPU will end up still being throttled because it's the overall heat that is the issue here. So that's a caveat. We are just talking about the CPU here and not about the GPU and other parts that go with it.
And there are, of course, other, other technologies that can be used to bring down the heat, including Big Dot Little, which incorporates more power efficient CPU cores with higher performance CPU cores. There's also things like the intelligent power allocation algorithm that's now in the mainstream uh, Linux kernel, which means that if the CPU has, is running and it's not using all of its performance, then some of that heat allocation, that thermal budget, can be given over to the GPU so that the overall temperature can rise to its maximum. Now, in terms of the actual design of the Cortex-A72, I won't go into it too much here in this video. There are some interesting things, like it uses now a 64K instruction cache, things like that. You can go over and read the article that I've written over at AndroAuthority.com if those things are of interest to you. However, what will be of interest to you is what's called the process node. Now, each chip is made using uh, silicon, using transistors, and the idea is that the smaller the gap between the transistors and the smaller the transistors, the more efficient the chip can be. Now, today's modern chips that we find in the Galaxy S7, uh, both the Qualcomm and the Samsung variants, are, are built using a 16 nanometer process. And ARM have already announced that they are working on a test chip at 10 nanometers, and it's expected that the Cortex-A73 will be able to be built at 10 nanometers. However, it can also be built at 16 nanometers. In fact, it could probably also be built at 28 nanometers if that's what uh, silicon vendors wanted. So let me throw some numbers at you. If it's built at 16 nanometers, like the current uh, chips of today, like the Kirin 950 and the Kirin 95, then the Cortex A73 is 10 to 15 percent faster than the Cortex A72. So it's a 10 percent performance boost, but yet a sustained level of performance throughout the whole working lifetime of a program. It doesn't dip after a few minutes. Now also when it's built on the same 16 nanometer process, it produces 20% less heat. Now that means that components like the GPU can be given a bit more of the thermal budget so they can run faster and they can produce more high performance 3D graphics. Now when the Cortex-A73 is built using a 10 nanometer process, and ARM have already proved they can do that, you'll find an article over at the AndroidAuthority.com website which talks about a chip that they've made with code name Artemis, and we now know that Artemis is in fact the Cortex-A73. On a 10 nanometer process, the A73 is 30% faster than the A72, and it's 30% more efficient than the A72. So that means that when we start to see the system on our chips for the A73, they're gonna be faster, they're gonna be cooler, and when you run them for a long period of time, their performance is not going to drop because the heat output is going to remain the same. Now, those are some pretty important things. Now, when will we see systems on a chips with the Cortex-A73? Well, of course, ARM is already working with its partners. You can be get pretty much guaranteed that they are already working on system on a chips that will have the A73 in it. And ARM already made the test chip and that test chip data will be sent on to its partners so they can get really quick as they can to getting chips out. Now, there is possibility that we may even see some phones with the Cortex-A73 in it by the end of this year, but if not by the end of this year, certainly in 2017. Personally, I'm quite looking forward to seeing uh, the A73 in action. It'll be good to benchmark it and to see its heat output when those phones become available. Now, as I'm sure you know, uh, it's very popular for CPUs to have eight cores in them. Now, some of those eight core processors have four Cortex-A53 cores and then four Cortex-A57 or four Cortex-A72 cores, big dot little. However, there are a whole bunch of mid-range phones that just use eight cores of the same type, and that's normally the cortex a53 and some of them might be clocked at let's say 1.5 gigahertz and some might be clocked at let's say 1 gigahertz so it's kind of a big dot little arrangement but using the same cortex core now what's really interesting about the cortex a72 is that it's a high performance core but they've actually managed to make it significantly smaller and it's now come to the point where actually it would be just about the same silicon area to produce a hexacore processor with four cortex a53 cores and two cortex a73 cores in the same system on a chip and it will take about the same space as an octa-core A53 chip. Now why that's important is because for the silicon vendors, the amount of silicon space is where they make their money. It costs millions of dollars to produce the first chip and then they have to produce millions of them to get their money back. Now silicon costs money and for every little square millimeter of silicon that isn't included, they can make some more profit. Now if these manufacturers actually get around to making hexa-core chips, 
with two Cortex-A73s and four Cortex-A53s, then we'll actually see a 90% boost in single thread performance. So that means doing certain activities like uh, scrolling on a web page or even loading a web page will actually be significantly faster because the single thread speed is better. And as for multi-thread speed, that will actually be 30% better. So that's going to be an interesting development for 2017. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to connect with me over at the Android Authority uh, forums. You can use this link here to go and speak to me. We can talk about the Cortex-A73, we can talk about GPUs, we can talk about any of the other Gary Explained videos that I have made. I'd love to connect with you there. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Please download the Android Authority app, which means you can get access to all of our content on your mobile phone as soon as it becomes available. And last but not least, don't forget to go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.